is the most trouble I've ever seen Ray Leonard in. Right here, he is badly hurt. Indiana Jones 3, Star Trek 5, Ghostbusters 2. Sequels seldom deliver the original goods, but in this season of sequels, one of them already has. Leonard versus Hearns. Hello, I'm Larry Merchant, and we're here to show you how, once again, Sugar Ray Leonard and Tommy Hearns exceeded all expectations. In sheer drama, even exceeded themselves. Except that the conclusion, after the brawl was over, was inconclusive, a draw. But was it truly, or as most viewers believe, did the judges, bedazzled by Leonard, misjudge? We'll show you the fight in its entirety, then interview those judges and ask all the experts out there, you, who really won via a 900 number. And of course, the fighters will give us their thoughts on the fight, the result, and their futures, rematch or retirement. Here now is what happened inside the ring. Leonard Hearns, two. Here's the impressive site, which has become home to boxing's biggest events. From Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, HBO Sports presents World Championship Boxing. Tonight, WBC super middleweight champion Ray Leonard defends his title against Thomas Hearns. It's scheduled for 12 rounds. has staged some of the most dramatic confrontations in recent boxing history in the past decade. Hagler Duran, Hearns Duran, Hagler Hearns, Leonard Hagler, and of course, September 16, 1981, two welterweight champions met in a ring classic, Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas Hearns. Tonight, we're here to see if these two aging super middleweights can rekindle the memories of nearly eight years ago. And hello, I'm Jim Lapley. So now, after a wait of nearly eight years, we are finally ready for Leonard Hearns 2. This bout takes place after a long and bizarre, some would say overly theatrical promotional tour, which attempted to compare the fight to a world war. Also, after the initially offhand and lighthearted taunt from Hearns, which touched off, perhaps unjustifiably, a spate of newspaper stories about the prospect of steroid use in this sport. And of course, most recently, after the arrest 48 hours ago of Thomas Hearns' younger brother, Henry, in the connection with an apparent shooting death of a woman in a home owned by Hearns in Southfield, Michigan. Nevertheless, now all attention turns to the fight itself. And here to help put us in perspective for us is HBO's boxing analyst, Larry Merchant. Larry, cynics would say and do say, here are two aging fighters going into the ring for a lot of money, which ought to go to younger, fitter fighters. What about all that? Boxing is a sport that invites cynicism, but this isn't a fat George Foreman meeting guys who can't fight back to try to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world. This is Henry Fonda and John Wayne in the twilight of their careers meeting in the KO Corral back there. These guys are quality athletes. They've given us thrills and chills for a decade, and they've earned the right to this rematch. And in fact, many, many memorable fights have been fought by great fighters in the twilight of their careers when they slow down enough to become vulnerable. Sugar Ray Robinson, Joe Lewis, Archie Moore, and of course, Ray Leonard when he fought Marvin Hagel. What could be better than that? Let's have another one of those. 
And, of course, the public's demand for this fight is underlined by a financial bonanza, which is expected to make it one of the largest grossing bouts in the history of the sport. But if there's anyone who should complain about the presence of these two men in the ring, it's the man whom Ray Leonard himself has called the best middleweight in the world, Michael Nunn, who now waits on the sidelines while older fighters gobble up all these dollars. Michael, do you see this as two quality fighters who deserve this kind of exposure, or are these interlopers poaching on your territory? Well, no, I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, Tommy and Sugar Ray should get together and uh, settle differences. It's maybe it's eight years too late, but uh, let them go on a fight and get out the way, and hopefully they'll give me an opportunity to fight one of them. You don't mind waiting on the sideline for now? I'm a young man, Jim, and I don't mind waiting. You know, I just want to fight the ultimate winner. All right. You will see who the winner will be from very close range as Michael, in place of Ray Leonard, our normal, normal HBO analyst, will sit in with us tonight and help call a part of the fight with us. So now Thomas Hearns moves from his dressing room toward the ring for what he himself says now and has been saying for years would be the biggest night of his life. The most important fight of his career. He has fought 16 times, as you can see, since the bout with Ray Leonard in 1981. This will be Leonard's fourth fight since that time. And it is partially because of that much exposure in the ring and, of course, the knockout losses to such as Marvelous Marvin Hagler and Iran Barkley that many believe that it is Hearns, not the older Ray Leonard, who brings a shop-worn body into the ring. That's true because he hasn't been to Tommy Hearns of sweet memory in his last few fights. But possibly that can be excused because he may be like a guy who's playing and who has played in thousand dollar poker games who when he fights lesser fighters is like the same guy having to fight in five dollar poker games. He just wasn't as ready and wasn't as hyped up. We know he's had a long, sincere training effort. This fight means so much to him that he has to be considered dangerous and ready. Thomas Hearns has had 49 professional fights. He will be remembered, regardless of what happens tonight, more for his defeats than for his victories. I suppose his misfortune is that he came along at a time when there were so many other great fighters in his, in his weight class. 38 knockouts among the 46 victories. And indeed, it has been the regret of Thomas Hearns' career, something beyond his control, that he has not had the audience appeal that his opponent tonight, Ray Leonard, possessed from the time he first entered the ring. And there he comes. As we mentioned, this will be only his fourth bout since the Thomas Hearns fight. And what this... One of the things that distinguishes Ray Leonard from other outstanding talents who have been prize fighters is that he has been able to give his best on the big occasion. He, he goes beyond the big occasion. And of course, that's what happened in the first fight between Ray Leonard and Tommy Hearns. A lot was expected of it because of the unusual circumstance of two great young fighters developing in parallel paths at the same time in the same division. He was the one who was able to deal with it. Since the first fight with Thomas Hearns, there was a bout with Bruce Finch. That was followed by retirement and eye surgery for the detached retina condition of the left eye. Then a few years later, he came out of retirement to fight Kevin Howard, a bout in which for the first time in his career, he was knocked on his butt in the ring retired for another 35 months, made the dramatic comeback against Hagler, fought against Donnie Lalonde, a 175-pound fighter, in November of 1988 in this ring. And now for the first time since 1981, he puts together two fights in less than a year. And part of the significance of those two fights you mentioned, Howard and Lalonde, was that he was knocked down for the only time in his professional career. And then we found out about what's inside Ray Leonard. And one of the givens of this fight is, is that when Ray Leonard is hurt, he's at his most dangerous. When Tommy Hearns has been hurt in the past, he has stayed hurt. Ray Leonard is wearing a robe which serves as a tribute to Nelson Mandela. And according to the information coming from Leonard's camp, 
It was 25 years ago on this day that Nelson Mandela, the imprisoned South African martyr of apartheid, was put in jail. So taking up the mantle of anti-apartheid tonight is Ray Leonard, and there is the ring record, 35 wins, the one loss, a decision to Roberto Duran in Montreal in 1980. 25 KOs among the 35 victories. Much has been made of the new muscularity of Ray Leonard. He has, of course, gained 22 pounds and then come back down a little bit since his first fight with Hearns. There's a look at the tail of the tape. Hearns still with the imposing height and reach advantages. Interesting that Hearns weighed in at 162 and a half pounds. Leonard down at 160. The weight limit for this fight was 168. Well, of course, there's been a lot of talk about a weight limit of 164 pounds in their contract, but this weight may be best for Tommy Hearns. And here is our punch start profile of the fighters and how active they generally are and how accurate they generally are with their punches. And now you can take a look at their jabs, and that is particularly important for Tommy Hearns because when he fought at a distance in the first fight, that's when he dominated that fight. Judges scoring on the 10 point must. system. No standing eight count. No three knockdown rule. So you can be knocked down three times and still be in the fight. And you can be saved by the bell only in the last round. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Caesars Palace here in Las Vegas, Nevada, where tonight Top Rank and Budweiser present the war. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman Dr. Elias Ghanem, the commissioners are Dwayne Ford, Jay Nady, Dr. James Knave, and Freddie Little, Executive Director Chuck Minker. Representing the World Boxing Council here at ringside is the president of that organization, Jose Suleiman, and supervisor Sam Macias. The chief physician at ringside, Dr. Donald Romeo. Also in attendance, Dr. Flip Pomansky and Dr. James Wishgame. Timekeeper, Al Bicic. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Mike Lachella. The three judges doing the scoring for this bout. Jerry Roth, Dolby Shirley, and Tommy Kazmarek. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, top rank and the King of Beers, Budweiser, present the war. Let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds for the WBC Super Middleweight Championship of the World. The referee for this contest, working for the 65th time in a world title bout, is Richard Steele. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the gold colors of the famous Kronk Gym in Detroit, Michigan. His professional record, 46 victories, 38 by knockout, only three defeats. Included in his history is the welterweight, super welterweight, middleweight, super middleweight, and light heavyweight world championships. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he challenges for the WBC super middleweight title. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the five-time champion of the world, Thomas Hitman Ho! Wearing the red and white trunks from Landover, Maryland. This Olympic gold medalist of the 1976 Games has a professional record of 35 and 1. 25 by KO. He is a six time world champion in five different divisions, including welterweight, junior middleweight, middleweight, super middleweight, and light heavyweight divisions. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the WBC super middleweight champion of the world, Sugar. Okay, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning again, obey my commands at all times. If there's no question, shake hands, good luck. The question here, Jim, 
is whether Hearns will try to stay outside where he was most successful in their first fight and whether Ray Leonard will go on the attack where he was most successful in the first fight. And let the record state that the two fighters did not make eye contact with one another until just a couple moments ago after referee's instructions. Ray Leonard tried to engage Tommy Hearns in a staring duel. Hearns did not look at him except for one brief moment when he was introduced, and at that point, Ray looked away. As the bout begins, Hearns tries a jab and attempts to set the tempo. the dominant weapon of the first five rounds of Leonard Hearns won, and Tommy is trying to establish it as such once again. Very quickly, Michael Nunn, what do you expect to see these two men trying to do in the early going? Well, I figure the first round is going to be like a full-round process between both fighters. You know, Tommy's going to come out and try to get the jab established, and Ray's going to just sit back and let him pick and block his shots. Leonard steps in for the first time, misses with a left uppercut, and moves back up. Ray was going to the body. It seems apparent to me, Jim, that he is going to try to fight a bit of a war of attrition here by going to the body and getting Hearns tired. Hearns is a little dry. Hasn't really broken much of a sweat here in round one. Oddly enough, in his two most important fights against Leonard and Hearns and Hagler, Hearns did not come in right physically came in underweight and overtrained for Leonard. He came in with his legs feeling weak for Hagler. And if a fighter is dry throughout the early rounds, then one thing you suggest to yourself is that he might be overtrained. Leonard lands a jab to the side of Hearns' face. First solid blow for him. Now Ray is standing his ground more. Again, he goes to the body. You are seeing the flat-footed style of the new Ray Leonard. This is not the Ray Leonard who danced his way into the hearts of boxing fans in the early part of the decade. That may be a message punch. Just missed with a right cross, and Hearn smiles and waves as if to say, come on back. But right now, it is Leonard who is seizing the initiative, as Hearns has stopped throwing the jab. Hearns has said that he wants to catch Ray Leonard on the way in, but Leonard is so quick jumping in with those big punches, that's going to be difficult right off. And he scored with a right-hand lead over Hearns' jab. Ray says that Tommy has a habit of dropping the left now. <laughs> Round one complete. You got his rhythm. Uh, he's not as fast as long. You understand? He's not as fast as long. Look a little. Looking good. People are going to start pumping his hands a little bit more now, okay? Because you're breaking up his lung. Time set him up. Beautiful. And you see everything you can do in that round, just about you can do. You saw it. Low and people. He's going to go for every point you make. But I got to have that one, two at him. All right? See if we can do it off a double stick. Real good. Okay. Real good. You're going to find the right hand now. Just a matter of time. Come on. Stay where you are. Stay directly in front of me. Just move. Okay? Good luck. All right. Very quickly, Michael Nunn, which fighter would have the mental edge coming out of round one? Well, uh, I had to lean toward Tommy Hearns because uh, I understood he was telling me to get that jab to work. I'm going to start throwing more jabs and uh, uh, Ray's corner, they weren't saying that much. Incidentally, for the second consecutive fight, Ray Leonard fights without Angelo Dundee in the corner, the man who was a fixture in so many of his great victories in the past. This time, another regular, Janks Morton, is absent from the corner. 
Dave Jacobs, who was in Hearns' corner for the fight in September of 81, returns to Ray Leonard's corner tonight. By staying this way, flat-footed right in front of Hearns, Leonard is saying to Hearns, go ahead, lead. I'm going to counter you. Both of them want to counter right now. That's why not too much is happening. Leonard landed a looping left, but it had no snap. Again, Leonard to the body. Hearns is not yet pumping the jab the way Emmanuel Stewart asked him to do. Hearns tries to land a right. Leonard blocked it. If this is a war as this fight was advertised, right now it's just a war of attrition. Almost a war of nerves. There's been very little contact. Short with the right hand, Leonard was able to step back. But Hearns is becoming a little more active now within the past 45 seconds. Trying to get inside of those long arms of Tommy Hearns. remain a little out of range of one another and just as I say that Leonard is able to step in and land. Round two coming to a close. Leonard switches to a southpaw stance and takes a right hand in the face for his trouble. City crowd on hand, not an empty seat in the house. Round three begins in the desert. First two rounds, tentative, a feeling out process. One of the most effective blows, a right hand by Hearns just at the end of round two after Leonard had switched to a southpaw stance, a strategy he toyed with throughout his training in Florida. still trying to get inside to the body of Hearns. Very conscious of going for Tommy's ribcage. Hearns beginning to flick the jab a little more often than was the case prior to the midpoint of round two. Leonard try a right toward the kidney of Hearns. He believes that he can get there with that punch if he sets it up correctly. Hearns is landing with the jab now. And this begins to assume some of the complexion of the first fight, particularly the first four or five rounds. Now Leonard 
is able to step in and land his jab. Not in such a way as to do damage to Tommy. Hand by Hearns, and Leonard is stopped in his tracks. Hearns gains confidence and knocks Leonard down. regarded as one of the great weapons in the sport. Tommy Hearns is right cross. Now he tries to land it again. Leonard fighting back. Keep remembering that when he's hurt, Sugar Ray Leonard is dangerous. Well, he's hurt right now. And he is somewhat hurt, a little stunned right now. And Hearns is wary of that reputation. Landing with the left. Has not been able to get the right in a second time. And Ray is going after him. And Hearns is laying back. And Ray lands a right and a left. To show Tommy Hearns he's out of the temporary stupor. Hearns comes back with another right. They stand toe to toe and trade blows. Let's take a look at that knockdown again. Tommy Hearns has said over the years that that little monster has been has been deviling him and, tr and running after him all these years because of the memory of that first. But now Tommy Hearns is chasing the monster down. That was the time when they both threw right hands. Hearns' right hand got in and he follows up with it. So there was the solid right cross, which set it up. Then he hit Ray on the back of the head with that one, which caused the knockdown. Much like the knockdown of Donnie Lalonde in their fight, a high on the head. Third time in his career that Ray Leonard has been knocked down. And I think that would have to be one of the most devastating single punches he ever took, the right cross that set it up. From his point of view, Hearns is fighting a practically perfect fight, patient, using his left hand, trying to goad Leonard into making moves, and giving Leonard all kinds of problems as he tries to probe to get inside. Michael Nunn, are you surprised at how close Leonard is staying to Hearns in this round? Yes, I'm real surprised. You know, I figured Ray would uh, be saying a distance, you know, trying to slip the jab, but he's right in there with Tommy. He's letting him know that, hey, let's go to war and do it. Knowing the competitiveness of Ray Leonard, I believe he thinks he has to do something dramatic here to get the crowd on his side, to get the officials on his side. Otherwise, he can find himself climbing a mountain again, as in the first fight. But he runs the risk of putting himself in range of that devastating right hand, which has already had him down once. Leonard lands the right. It was a bit of a glancing blow. Hearn smiled. Ray showing a lot of courage, stepping back up in there time and again. Leonard landed two solid shots to the body there. Tries to go back to the grip cage. begins to look like a war. Yeah. Just missed.
players making assertive statements. That was a grazing punch by by Tommy Hearns. Now watch Ray Leonard go back in, throw a right, followed by a left and a, and a double uppercut to the body. If you look back at the Lalonde fight, Larry, you might suggest that the knockdown that Lalonde was able to pin on Ray seemed to wake him up, invigorate him a little bit. Something of the same thing appeared to happen here. Well, we know how intelligent a fighter Ray Leonard is and how much presence he has in the fight. And he has to know that these have been four difficult rounds for him and that he's fallen far behind. There was a bit of desperation in some of his lunges in that previous round. Let's see what he can do to try to break Hearns down. Hearns seems to have gained confidence and is coming on very assertively. Look how energetic Hearns is with the jab now. Peppering Leonard time and time again. And remember that Tommy was able to nearly close Ray's left eye with the left jab in fight number one. Leonard just pawing with the jab and leaving it out there. Lunging again, as you say, Larry. It is Leonard who looks tentative and Hearns who looks commanding in round five. Another right cross by Hearns, sneaked in between Leonard's gloves. Tremendous left hook following the right hand by Ray Leonard. And now Hearns is holding on for dear life, which is something he didn't do in the first fight. A right and a left. Leonard just missing with and a right plant. some of Leonard's best stuff here. here and there was the left hook that wobbled Hearns and started the onslaught from Sugar Ray Leonard to get him back into this fight both punches in the combination landed the overhand right and the startling left hook you're always hearing trainers tell their fighters, put your punches together. That's what happens 
when you throw more than one punch at a time. The right was a grazing right. The left connected solidly and turned that round around at least. Round six begins. Michael Nunn, who holds the upper hand now? Well, the last round, you know, Ray kind of took charge. You know, he hit Tommy with a good right hand, came back with a left hook and had him hurt until the end of the last round. So, you know, Ray got, he, he has charge right now. We'll see if he can maintain the edge. Hearns tries to come back with the jab again. He's been most effective in this fight when working off the jab. Not terribly surprising. That was also the case in 1981. And Hearn seems to have recovered. He has trained very hard for this fight. And of course, to him, as he has stated in so many different ways, it's life and death. And that kind of high motivation is keeping him going here, where he had such a hard time in the first fight. Leonard got a jab in and managed to slip both of Hearns' punches in return. And a little bit of blood coming from Hearn's mouth. Tommy starting to grin a little bit. There is a small trickle of blood around the bottom lip. So far, Ray Leonard has been unable to follow up on the advantage of the last round. And while Hearns continues to use the jab a lot, though, it is not the joking stiff jab with which he dominated rounds three and four. Leonard showing off his ability to slip the jab, steps in and hits Hearns with a right cross, and Hearns comes back with a straight left. beginning to become the busier fighter in tight. Working the body and remembering the throw when the two stand in close. You all right? Okay. Get this mouthpiece on. Okay. Get this mouthpiece. 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 Get this Right. Harold Letterman, our unofficial official, how do you score the fight so far? Larry, I've got it four rounds to two in favor of Tommy Hearns. For the first four rounds, I thought he was fighting a perfect fight. He had Ray Leonard on the end of the jab. He was doubling the jab. And, and, and then all of a sudden, Sugar Ray Leonard turned it around in the fifth round. He went up in Tommy Hearns' face, and he gave Tommy Hearns a bad beating in the fifth round, and he stayed in his face, landed the better shots in the sixth. Something to keep in mind here, Jim and Mike, their first fight was a watershed fight in scoring. After that first fight, a lot of people objected to the scoring because Leonard didn't get full credit for the rounds he dominated. And since that time, it has been more of a practice here and elsewhere to score 10-8 rounds. And that could become a crucial factor in this fight tonight. Hearns landed a left that back Leonard up. Ray Leonard began this round standing Ray very is hurt. close to Tommy Hearns, and he may pay a price for it. Hearns wailing away. Leonard staggers against the ropes a bit. Tommy's leaving himself open to break and come back with anything. This is the most trouble I've ever seen Ray Leonard in. Right here, he is badly hurt. And only his experience and his guts can carry him through here. fighters are more vulnerable to getting hit and Ray is getting hit more good punches 
than we've seen him get hit with before. And right now, he's been hurt badly enough that those punches he's throwing are pawing, waving punches with no snap behind them. It is Hearns who's doing all the damage here in round seven. Now Leonard begins to get some starts back in his punches. But Hearns lands the right again. You get the feeling that if Hearns can step across and land the right on balance, Leonard's going to have trouble staying up. Little smile on Tommy Hearns lips. He's saying it's a little different now, isn't it? Surely few have ever wanted more badly to win a fight than Tommy Hearns wants to win tonight. Too much? We'll see. Sometimes I thought, Jim, that he almost wanted to win it too much and that tensed him up. Leonard coming back with a furious assault to the body. And when he throws to the body, Hearns does not throw back at him. Amazing recuperative powers by Ray Leonard. Amazing combative instincts. Amazing ability to seize and dominate the last 30 seconds to the minute of a round. survive another round in which it appeared early that he was out on his feet. This is the barrage that had Ray Leonard in trouble in the early part of that round. And if Tommy Hearn, if Tommy Hearns didn't get overexcited, he might have finished him there. Hearns saw a chance to end the fight right then, but it eluded him. We'll he see if not, that becomes costly. He did not effect, effectively set up Ray and measure him for the right cross, which is the punch with which he might be able to end the fight. But this is a more poised Tommy Hearns. He's staying in the fight. He's fighting a well-disciplined fight. And right now, he's leading, convincingly. Such and was the case in September of 1981 as well. And keep, but keep in mind, that was a 15-round fight that went 14 rounds. This is a 12-round fight. And if that fight had been stopped at 12 rounds, Tommy Hearns was the winner on all three cards. Remarkable fight so far. The graphic you saw between rounds indicated both fighters in the first seven rounds threw an equal number of punches. Ray Leonard, I believe, had been counting on Hearns to show fatigue as the fight wore on. He's had a problem with his stamina in some recent fights. We don't see any signs of it yet. You agree with that, Michael? Tommy Hearns does not look tired to you yet? No, Tommy, he, he's not tired. You know what I mean? He's really surprised with his condition. What about Ray? Ray, too, you know what I mean? Uh, what I think Ray's trying to do is let Tommy punch himself out. And rounds 8, 9, and 10, he'll try to pick the pace up. Isn't it a gamble falling as far behind on points as he may be falling at this moment? Yes, you know, uh, by fights going 12 rounds, it's, it's not beneficial to Ray Leonard by letting Tommy take control. He may not have any choice. Round 8. 
in its waning minute. Hearns continuing to stalk Leonard around the ring. Right cross just missed. and then a left inside. One thing that should be emphasized here, Jim. At this weight, Tommy Hurries is obviously stronger defensively than he was at 145 pounds in their first fight. Given the size of his body, this is a more natural weight for him, and he appears to be stronger at this weight, at least in this fight. But, of course, it was at something close to this weight. He was knocked out by Iran Barkley, knocked down by James Kinchin. something dramatic and soon. Four rounds remaining. Hearn showing no signs of fatigue. Still done. The action with his jab. He occasionally stepping in for heavy blows. He has twice had Ray Leonard in serious trouble. Once down on the canvas. Array. Tommy Hearns keeps this up. There will be no Leonard Duran three. There probably won't be a Leonard Hadler two. Might be a Leonard Hearns three. Or Ray Leonard being a proud man might pack it in. Or how about none Hearns one? Well, Tommy Hearns has already said he wants no. something dramatic and decisive. And Hearns is still staggered from the flurry that ended the last round. Leonard was just able to knock him back into the ropes with a jab. And not a hard jab at that. Left hand on the face. Leonard may have a shot here. Can 
Ray Leonard do it again? This is a fighter who has shown a matchless ability to rise to occasions. You just saw the scorecard of our Harold Letterman, which would suggest that if the other scorecards are in sync, Ray may need a knockout to avoid losing Leonard Hearns, too. surprised that Ray isn't being a little bit more reckless here. I think Ray should be uh, real reckless here right now. I mean, because, you know, Tommy's like holding back. He should take charge and just start letting his hands go. Which punches or which combination of punches would be most likely to get the job done for him? The uppercut to the midsection, then up to the chin. The shot he hurt him with the last round. I think he'll be successful to start throwing that shot. This is a very warm night in the desert. Both fighters have absorbed some hard punches. Will they be able to sustain their attacks in these last two and a half rounds? Leonard goes to the body again. And now Hearns has recovered from the beating he took at the end of round nine. Son, you're blowing it. But nobody has to tell Ray Leonard there. He's standing in the middle of the round, in the middle of the ring, and he knows that he can blow this fight if he doesn't do something fast. And you saw Richard Steele preventing Leonard from making a bull rush toward Hearns to begin that round. At the end of the last round, there was a brief staring match as Hearns stared ominously at Leonard. Leonard rejoicing over the solid right hand he had landed to end the round, went back to his corner and threw his arms in the air. Attempting to look the part of the winner, as he has done so successfully in the past. Right now, he is a Ray Leonard in all likelihood trailing on points in the closing minutes against Tommy Hearns. He's been in that position once before. Solid right hand by her. Spectacular right cross, and Leonard is in trouble again. And Ray Leonard had a look on his face there that I had never seen before. A look of utter bewilderment. to regain his composure and he jumps back in with the right hand. Does he have enough left to do any damage with it? This is the first time in Ray Leonard's career that he's been knocked down twice in a fight. Both times he was the victim of sensational right crosses from Thomas Hearns. 
many fighters would come back in with this will and this gumption at this point in the fight? I can think of one of them. You're looking at it. Hearns just missed with a haymaker. a much smarter fight than he did in the first fight. Every time he's been hurt a little bit, he's folded those big arms around Ray Leonard and bought some time. He didn't do it at all in the first fight. Come on, work your way out. Staggered Ray Leonard. He's hurt now. Tommy Hearns patiently goes after him. Three more right hand, two more right hands, and Ray falls down almost from exhaustion as well as from the hurt. As we said earlier, when great fighters come to the end of their careers, they become more vulnerable. Come on, come on, and they often give us memorable fights. Ray Leonard needs a knockout. He knows it. Last round. Let's go, champ. Leonard begins the round with a small smile on his face. Surely he has no illusions. Tommy Hearns isn't holding back when all he could do is play out the round. This is the pride of Tommy Hearns. He would love nothing more than to put Leonard down for good. He just doesn't want to win. He wants to beat up his tormentor. He wants to spear the white whale. He wants to get rid of eight years of nightmares.
seldom see a greater display of what it is that makes men fighters. As Boris Becker said in the recent French Open, when you get to the end of a grueling match, it had nothing to do with tennis. This had nothing to do with fighting there in the last minute. It had to do with, these, with what these men are made of. Final punch stat statistics for the fight. A statistical profile of what you've just seen. Ray Leonard throwing 92 more punches. Ben Hearns, by the count of the punch stat computer, Hearns landing at a higher rate and certainly landing more of the significant and damaging blows in the fight. Hearns twice knocking Leonard down. Harold Letterman, your final unofficial scorecard. Jim, I've got it seven to five in rounds, 150 to 111 in favor of Thomas Hearns. I thought that Thomas Hearns kept Sugar Ray Leonard on the end of his jab effectively. He did a lot of damage. He set up the right hand by using the left jab, but Hearns used that left jab effectively. Right now, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official decision. Let's here's the official scoring. Jerry Roth scores the bout 113 to 112 for Thomas Hearns. Tommy Kazmarek scores it 113 to 112 for Sugar Ray Leonard. And Dolby Shirley scores the bout 112 112. This bout is a draw. It goes without saying, we take this as a major shock. And so does this crowd. It was, right up until the moment that decision was announced, a great prize fight. Every bit, the showcase for two warriors that we had expected it might be. It was a courageous performance by Ray Leonard. It was a courageous and in my eyes at least, a dominant performance by Tommy Hearns. Unfortunately, it is now a fight which will forever be remembered more for the decision than for what took place in the 12 rounds leading to it. Leonard Hearns, Duran Hagler. What a decade in the welterweight and middleweight divisions. Joining us now from a studio in Detroit, Tommy Hearns, and from Washington, D.C., Ray Leonard. Tommy, starting with you, there was a very pure moment right after that fight, even when that disappointing to you decision was announced. You were so elated with your performance, it was almost as if you really didn't care what anybody else said. Um, that's not true. I, I cared. It played a, I felt very concerned about that, but... Um, Known, knowing that um, after the judges um, have made the decision, there's nothing really you can do about it. You have to really accept, uh, I guess, the uh, decision that they made. Well, but since that time, you've said you thought you were robbed. What's changed I you? Said, I said that I thought that I was ahead at least four rounds. Do you think that if the situation was reversed and Ray had knocked you down twice, that that would have only been a draw? Um, I don't think so. I think that um, I felt that Ray is a big person in, in Las Vegas or any, any city that he fights in. And um, as he can get, if it, it was a point that, that he, it was in the fight where he had the edge, I felt that he probably would have kept been victorious that night. Yeah. But I'd like to point out, as I turn to Ray, that when you fought James Kinchin, you were knocked down, and you got a controversial decision. Ray, do you think there's some aura about you or the way you fight that attracts judges? I don't agree with that, Larry. I wish that the aura would affect Tommy Hearns. <laughs> <laughs> probably it didn't. But if anything, I think it's just a matter of the way the judge is so fit to score the fight. Uh, naturally, uh, I didn't particularly fight my kind of fight. I didn't feel mentally committed to the game to do the best that I could. Uh, it was just a, a strange, strange evening for me, a very physical evening for me, but thank God things turned out okay. Let's then re-examine the highlights of the first half of that fight. All right, let's go to round three first. 
the first decisive round of the fight. What happened here, fellas? Well, I looked Tony right in the eyes, Larry, and I, we had the same thing in mind to throw the right hand. It was a matter whose right hand would get there first. Well, were you hurt when he hit you the second time? Was he already hurt by then? I was dazed. Yes, I was dazed. In fact, I slipped his right hand and caught him behind the back of the head, Larry, but I still was dazed. Here, I'm very conscious, and he's really trying to counter Tommy, but Tommy's trying to get in the, uh, the left hook to the body and to come with his right hand also. Were you surprised, Tommy, that you were able to knock him down this early in the fight? Well, um... You know, I, I never underestimate you know, the, the power that I uh, possess in that right hand. Um, I knew that if I was able to get to Ray, I knew I would be able to do some damage. I didn't know how much damage, but I knew I would, would be able to get some, some kind of response from him. And um, it was just determined on the response I got from him. See, just then we just do <laughs> the right hand right together. We're both reading each other's minds. We had on the mind, throw the right hand, deliver it, the shot. And, and I was just trying to put more power behind my, my right hand than Ray was putting behind his. All right, now you're behind in the fight in everybody's estimation, Ray. Do you know you have to do something and do it quick against this man? Well, that was my intention, Larry, to pretty much let Tommy spin himself and then take the attack. And this is what I'm doing here in the fifth round. I had Tommy hurt. As a matter of fact, Tommy, you made up your mind that you wouldn't go down this time. Well, you know, I, I think in, <laughs> in life, you have to make your mind what you want to do. Um, in this fight, I was just determined that I was going to go through the fight, I was going to win the fight, I was not going to be knocked down or out this time. Because like, I put some pretty good shots together. Yeah, and I have I, to admit. He surprised me that he stood up. I have to admit, you did put some great shots together. And I, and I was able to win the storm. Um, and you know, you surprised me too, Ray. Ray, you couldn't follow up on your advantage in the next round. Were you winded or was Tommy stronger than you anticipated? Well, there's no question about it. Tommy was strong. But what concerns me the most about my performance, Larry, is that I hurt Tommy and I couldn't finish him off. And normally, I, if I hurt a guy, he's history. Official Tommy Kaczmarek differed with the other two officials on the first two tentative rounds. All three gave Hearns 10-8 margins for that knockdown. And all three gave Ray Leonard 10-8 margins for his big round, the fifth. At the end of six rounds, Kaczmarek had Leonard ahead. By the same score, the other two officials had Hearns ahead. Tommy, by being able to withstand some of Ray's best shots in that fifth round and come back in the sixth, do you think you made him doubt himself after that? Um, I think that um, it put a lot of thought on his mind because Ray led into the fight. He thought that um, everything was true that was said about me, um, that I had no legs, that I had, that I had no chin anymore. I wasn't able to take no good punch anymore. So when Ray seen that that wasn't true, I think he had to go back and regroup and it took time for him to regroup. And by that time, I was already applying the pressure. Then he didn't really know what to think. Ray, it was obviously a life and death fight for Tommy Hearns. Was that his edge in your judgment? Was it life and death for you? It turned out to be that way, Larry, because uh, at first it was a no-win situation because I was expected just to blow Tommy out of there because Tommy was considered the guy the fighter that once was, but Tom is a fighter that still is. And I had to deal with that and it became a reality, especially the third and the 11th round. Did you cut corners in training by going to Florida rather than out in the desert because you wanted to be nearer to your family, by not having your former trainers, Jenks Morton or Angelo Dundee there, men who could tell you to go the extra mile or the extra five miles when perhaps you didn't want to? The absence of Jenks Morton and Angelo Dundee were not at all factors, Larry, because with me to go the extra mile, it only requires myself, self-motivation and self-discipline. And I think once I lose those special qualities, it's time to retire. But I still have those qualities, and unfortunately, uh, I just wasn't as motivated as I should have been, and let alone against a great fight like Tommy Hearns. Okay, fellas, let's now take a look at the highlights of the second half of the fight. 
Round seven was another good round for you, Tommy. What was happening here? Well, I was trying to take control there, um, Larry. Um, using more of the left jab, trying to work off the left jab. See, I'm working different shots off the left jab, trying to make the right style to work, watch the left hand. And I was able to do a little bit more. But you got wild here. You let him off the hook, didn't you? Um, I kind of got a little wild at, at that time because I was anxious. And I started throwing punches from all angles, all kinds of shots. And um, Ray was slick, he was very crafty, crafty fighter that night, and um, he was able to move and get away from a lot of those shots. And right, now it's the 11th round, Ray. You've won the previous two rounds, you're coming on. Did you think that you were going to finish very strongly and come through here as you did in the first fight? Well, until I right hand, I thought I was gonna finish very strong. I stood in the way, and Tommy hit with left hooks and right hands. And Tom doesn't have a left hook, but it landed uh, Monday night. Well, what does that tell you? Does that tell you that you're not thinking as fast or that you're 33 years old and you're not moving as fast? I think it tells me I'm not thinking as fast, Larry. I really believe that my mind was not there. And uh, one thing about an athlete, he never wants to accept the last bell or the last whistle. But uh, watching this fight, apparently something is not right. Uh, and, of course, part of that something after you won the, those previous two rounds is that Tommy Hearns is still there, still apparently strong, and still going at you. Well, I, I picked the pace up, especially the 11th and 12th round, and the 12th round was my biggest round, I would have to believe. And uh, he just he surprised me standing up through the barrage of punches. Here his right hand landed, and uh, I was basically trying to make him throw a lot of punches and miss shots, but he was very accurate. Um, basically what I was doing there uh, like was to get, well, I had a letter watching the left hand because I was doing more with the left hand than I normally do. Normally I'm just using the left hand for one thing, it's to jab. And when I started shooting left hook, that's kind of surprised to me because Ray wasn't looking for the left hand. He was never looking for the left hook. He was looking for the straight left jab and the right cross. When the left hand came, then, you know, he was kind of puzzled. After that round, there was desperation in Ray Leonard's corner. Ray, did you believe you needed a knockout to win? Well, I felt that the two knockdowns didn't particularly help me, and uh, I needed to pour it on. If anything, I kind of felt that the knockdown would play an emotional, have an emotional role with the judges and the fans. Yet here comes Hearns when he seemed ahead, and yet he's still throwing everything at you. Tommy, why didn't you just defend what you thought was a big lead? Well, well, I, I, I felt after the level round, I felt that I could get Ray out of there, could knock him out, and I wanted to go out and um, try to do that. Um, I was told to just box more, but I, I guess we have our guts feeling. I was gonna feel it inside, just inside, and I feel that I can go out there and, and and work hard and try to get Ray out. Tommy, you were told to box me. I was told to come box you, but um, you know, sometimes we don't listen to instructions very well. <laughs> yeah, listen to instructions, big guy. <laughs> yeah, I should have. Right? Ray. After all is said and done, do you think it's fair to suggest that you are a stronger welterweight than Tommy and Tommy is as strong or stronger than you as a middleweight? Well, you know, as crazy as it may sound, Larry, I think you're right. I think there's a lot of validity to that because I went to the ring approximately about 161 and a half because I really didn't eat that much because I weighed in at 160. And Tommy was much bigger and much stronger than I was at this particular weight. Did you feel that too, Tommy? I felt that I was probably gonna be um, a little bit bigger than Ray because I always have been a little bigger than Ray, but I felt that uh, naturally this fight I was gonna be a little bigger and I felt that I was gonna be a little stronger than Ray in this fight too. Because back in 1981, I was 17 pounds lighter. So. How did you survive this? Did, did, he, did he almost have you going down? Oh, no, I was determined. <laughs> I had a lot of determination in this fight. I was determined not to, to be knocked off my feet at all. 
and you held him, which you didn't do in that first fight. I learned that after that. 19, after 1981, I learned how to hold and how to get myself back together and then come back and start putting on. How did Ray you? Hit me. He hit me after uh, the break just a few years ago. I was, I'm I sorry, didn't Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't accept that very well. <laughs> now, you were ahead now of where you were in 1981 on the judges' cards, Ray, but could you guys have really gone on after this? All right, that's what I needed, a few more rounds, but then again, I'm glad it wasn't a few more rounds left. Yeah, for one time in my life, Ray, I agree with you. In the second half of the fight, the officials disagreed on only two rounds. In the seventh, when Kaczmarek had Hearns winning, and then in the twelfth round, in which Shirley gave a two-point round to Ray Leonard. At the end of the night, they were only apart by two points. They agreed on which fighter won eight of the 12 rounds. Joining us now are the judges who touched off that firestorm of disbelief and protest, Jerry Roth and Dolby Shirley from Las Vegas, and in our New York studio, Tom Kaczmarek. Gentlemen, why do you think among you that there was such a disparity between what the public thought it saw and what you fellas thought you saw? Jerry? Well, it's hard to speak for the public. Uh, um, yeah, many people, I guess, thought Hearns won the fight uh, over Leonard. Uh, uh, maybe because he knocked him down a couple of rounds. Uh, I don't know. I can't speak for the public. I can only speak for uh, the way I judge the fight and the outcome of my score. Well, then let's address that business of the two-point round and the fact that a fighter doesn't have to knock another fighter down to get a two-point round, he could just beat him up badly enough to earn that. Uh, Dolby, is that how you saw that last round? Uh, you're correct, yes. Uh, I felt that, um, that the uh, amount of punishment that uh, Mr. Leonard inflicted on Mr. Hearns in that last round uh, justified uh, making that a 10-8. Uh, I had scored a 10-8 in a previous round, a round five, and I felt that uh, the two of them were comparable and uh, that was why I used the 10-8 uh, score in the 12th round. Tommy, philosophically, uh, Tommy Hearns may have won one or both of the first two rounds, which had very little action in them, and he did very little damage as Leonard did to him. Now, in this last round, Ray Leonard did a lot of damage to Tommy Hearns. Should he only get the same credit for that round as Tommy Hearns got for one of those first two rounds? Uh, you have to put in perspective. In the first and second round, neither fighter was doing much. In the, tenth, in the twelfth round, both fighters uh, did respond uh, offensively. If you recall, the beginning of the twelfth round, uh, Tommy Hearns came on uh, rather strong, and he landed some uh, scoring punches. Uh, then Leonard picked up the action and did have a good middle and closing segment of the round. But Hearns, during that period, was still in the fight. He, he was not in the same kind of trouble he was in during the fifth round. And that's why I scored it a 10-9. Just this last thing, Dolby, you've said that uh, you were under the impression that you had uh, given the fight to Hearns until you added up all the points at the end of the fight. So I suppose it could be fairly observed that uh, if you had been out there in the stands, you might have booed your own decision. <laughs> I, um, well, I first place never bet on a fight so I don't think I've been doing the decision and um, when you say that I added up the points it was not myself that added up the points they are uh, added at the uh, commission table and uh, I was just rather surprised that I came with a 112-112 uh, conclusion to that fight uh, uh, because I felt like that Tommy Hearns did win the fight thank you so much gentlemen and I have a confession like Dolby Shirley, I was surprised when I added up my score, thinking Hearns had won, but giving him just a one-point victory. After studying the tape of the fight twice, I switched the winner of one round and got a draw out of it, showing that what happens inside the ring really matters most. Who won, Leonard or Hearns? If you think Sugar Ray Leonard won the fight, dial 900-720-6141. If you think Tommy Hearns won, dial 900-720-6142. Each call costs 50 cents. 
We'll give you the results beginning with our first day of coverage of Wimbledon. That begins Monday, June 26th, 5 p.m. Eastern and Pacific Time, right here on HBO. Who won, or does it matter? Tommy and Ray, before you fellas rush to the phones, a couple more questions. Uh, Tommy, how distracted were you by the news about your brother being arrested on a murder charge just before the fight? Well, I was able to basically concern, I was very concerned about um, what was going on back home with my brother. Um, but I was concerned about what I was doing too, about to get into. Um, so I had to like set one thing to the side and that was to set the, my brother thing to the side for a minute and deal with what was really about to happen for me. And then after I finished with the fight, then I came back, I started concentrating more on my little brother. Ray, there was some uh, a personal impact perhaps on the fight for you as well. It's been publicized that you and your wife Juanita had been separated, yet she was there at the fight. And uh, I understand she fainted at the fight and then you flew back in a private jet. Uh, how is that situation being resolved? Well, the personal matter, Larry, I kept it personal, and, and so it wasn't a factor in the fight, like, like I'm keeping it now. But she fainted because she was under a great deal of pressure because she's about to open a new business. And um, I think that, along with the knockdowns and the fight itself, it kind of got the best of her. But she's fine now, thanks. Just this. Tommy, do you want to fight Ray again? Do you want to fight anyone again? Um, yes, I would love to fight Ray again. Ray? Are you going to fight Tommy Hearns again? Are you going to fight Roberto Duran? Are you going to fight anyone? Well, first of all, I have to decide whether, whether or not I'm going to fight again, Larry. And it's going to take a lot of soul searching because I want to know whether or not the guy Monday was Sugar Ray Leonard or just another person. But from what you've said here tonight, it sounds as if there's still unfinished business on your mind. I'll is that, um, is that my chair or your chair, right? That's my chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just want to make sure you're clear. I'm going to That's my you. chair, Tommy. Thank you very much, <laughs> fellas. Finally, this. To me, as bewildering as the decision seemed at the time, was the contradictory response of many of the critics around the country. They were thrilled by the action, by the theatrical swings of fortune, by the wonder of it all. And then they insisted that the men who had just entertained and moved them were too old and should get out of here, retire. By that presumptuous standard, Magic Johnson will have to quit when he's 32 because he won't be as good as he was at 22. Eric Dickerson will be dismissed when he gains just 1,200 yards a season instead of his usual 16 or 1,700. While Tommy Hearns and Ray Leonard make up their own minds, my only vote is one of thanks for proving that a tie doesn't have to be like kissing your sister. It can be like kissing Kim Bassinger. I was gifted with a, um, a natural talent to learn how to fight. And, um, you know, I'm doing very well at it right now. He's the most natural puncher that I've ever trained, I would say, in my entire uh, experience in boxing. He can punch with both hands. It's going to be very difficult for anyone to go